Let us stand for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God, as we humbly come before your throne of grace, dear Lord, God, I ask, oh God, that you would place the words in my mouth, oh God, to lift up unto your throne room, Father. God, we thank you, Lord God, for your presence, God. We thank you for your power in this place already, Father. Lord God, as we come before your holy throne of grace, dear Lord, we ask, oh God, that you sing in and through us today, Father God. We ask, oh God, that our worship this morning be for real, Lord God, that regardless, Lord God, of what we experienced last night or this morning, Lord God, that we would lift our hands as a sign of surrender unto you today, Father God. Knowing, Lord God, that you are able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ever ask or think. So, God, we thank you today, Father God, that you are equipping us, oh God, for worship. That you are equipping us, oh God, to praise you and lift your name higher than any other, Father God. God, we thank you, Lord God, for every person in this place today, Father God. We thank you, Lord God, that you are touching minds and hearts, Lord God, and moving, Lord God, on families, Lord God, and households, oh God. God, we thank you today, Lord God, oh God, that your spirit, Lord God, is manifesting itself, Lord God, and showing itself strong in this place today Father God God we thank you today oh God oh God that everything Lord God that you set out to do Lord God that it shall be done in the name of Jesus God we thank you today Lord God oh God that you are moving Lord God oh God that you are restoring oh God oh God that you are healing oh God oh God that you are walking Lord God through every road Lord God through every bench oh God through every pew Father God oh God that you are touching oh God every soul in this place today Lord God oh Oh God, everyone under the sound of my voice, oh God. Oh God, move by your spirit, oh God. May their lives be changed, oh God. May their hearts be changed, oh God. May everything, Lord God, that may be trying to go awry, Lord God, in their lives be changed, oh God, today. And God, we thank you today, Lord God, for your spirit, Lord God. God, because it makes us mighty in you, oh God. It makes us strong in you, Lord God. God, you said in your word, let the weak say I am strong, Lord God. God, let us begin to bear the infirmities of the weak. For, Father, we know that there are many that are suffering in such a time as this, oh God. But God, we thank you today, Lord God, that you are giving us strength, oh God, to pray one for another, Father God, to intercede one for another, oh God. Oh God, to begin, Lord God, to look out and be our brother and our sister's keeper, oh God. God, we thank you today, Lord God, for your presence and your power, Lord God. God, because it is life-changing, Lord God. It gives us new life, Father God. And God, we thank you, Lord God, for the man of God that will come forth, oh God, to deliver the message from on high, Lord God. Give them the words in which you would have them to say, Lord God, and speak to us today. But most of all, God, let our hearts and minds be receptive, oh God. And God, as we go forth through the rest of this week, oh God, we thank you, Lord God, for your strength, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, for your power, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, for your glory, oh God. And Lord God, we pray, Lord God, that as we step into the rooms this week, oh God, oh God, that lives shall be changed, oh God. That people shall be touched and healed and delivered not by a word that we say, Lord God, but by your presence and your power following us, oh God, wherever we shall shall go Lord God that when we go into a room that the atmosphere will begin to shift that things will begin to change oh God because people need you more than ever before and so God we thank you Lord God we thank you today Father God for you are mighty and strong and we shall walk in that we shall walk Lord God in the boldness in which you have given us oh God and so, God, we can continue to give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
could ever come close no thing can compare you're our living hope your
like never before, like never before. Let us be become more aware of your presence. We want to experience you, Lord, like never before. Feel the atmosphere. 
your glory, God. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long to be overcome, to be overcome by your presence. By your
Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on and worship him one more time. Hallelujah. Lord, we bless you and we praise you right now, God. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity that you've given us to come into your house one more time to praise and magnify and to glorify you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord today. And we do honor the Lord today. We thank God that this is the first Sunday. And here at New Vision for Christ Ministries on the first Sunday, we come before the Lord, amen, and we recognize and celebrate what Christ did on Calvary's cross by the serving and partaking of communion. The Bible says, before we eat of that bread and drink from that cup, let every man examine himself. So if there be anything that stands between you and your maker, master, creator, and redeemer, get it right with the Lord today before communion is served. In your own thoughts and in your mind, your own mind, every head bowed, every eye closed. Talk to the Lord. Let the church say amen. amen. We have our scripture reading at this time. The scripture comes from the book of 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, beginning with the 24th, and reading through the 32nd verses. 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, beginning reading from the 24th through the 32nd verses. And the scripture reads, And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Let every man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. And when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. The word of God is always a blessing to those who hear it, understand it, and are obedient unto it. Let us all stand to our feet at this time. Let us behold the wafer that is in our hands. The wafer represents the body of Jesus Christ as it hung on Calvary's cross. It is round because it represents an eternal and everlasting covenant that whosoever shall believe in the sacrifice of the Son of God, they shall be saved. It is flat because there is no leaven in it. Leaven represents sin, and there was no sin in the life or in the body of our Lord and our Savior. Let us take it, and let us eat of it. Let us behold the cups that we have in our hands, the contents that's inside of these cups and containers. They represent the blood that poured out of Jesus' body 
as he hung on Calvary's cross. The Bible says where there is no shedding of blood, there is no remission for our sins. Let us take it and let us drink it down to the bitter dregs. And let us continue to enjoy our salvation today. Amen. Glory to God. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Tell me what can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of I'm singing, oh, precious sin that flows That makes me white as snow
check out. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Mm. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. You may be seated at the presence of the Lord. Y'all came to worship today. Huh? Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> We thank you, Lord. We glorify you, God. Hallelujah. Now, now that's communion. <laughs> Hallelujah. That is communion. Glory to God. Turn with me as we go into the word of God this morning to the book of Psalms. Psalms, the 46th chapter. Psalms, the 46th chapter, we're going to begin reading at the first verse and read through the 11 verses on this morning. Psalms, Psalms 46, we'll be reading the, the whole chapter. Psalms 46, verses 1 through 11 this morning. And the scripture reads, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Old folks say in times of a trouble. Yeah. Verse 2, therefore will not, therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her and that right early. The heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Come, behold the works of the Lord, what desolations he has made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease up to the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in asunder. He burneth the chariot with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted amongst the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge, Selah. Amen. If I would have a title for the sermon today, it is Be Still. Amen. Simply, Be Still. Amen. So we take it from the 10th verse today. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted amongst the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Here we have in Psalms 46, it talks about all the calamities that could happen on earth. All of the things that could take place that would bring disaster and destruction. And the psalmist in detail, he talks about more than one thing. He says, look, things can get so bad to the mountains 
begin to shake and the mountains begin to be removed. And then he says, he says, even the holy places and the tabernacles can be affected by it. How many of y'all that are sitting up here even today, you, there's some shaking going on in your life. How many of y'all got some shaking going on? How many of y'all how many of y'all going through some trials and some tests? Now look at here. Watch this now. Last week, last week, God told us to hold on. Amen. On last week, he said, hold on to thy profession of faith. Now this was last week. So when the Holy Spirit started dealing with me this morning, I was like, well, look, Lord, you just told us to hold on. Last week, you were talking about holding on and don't let go. And I was like, when the Holy Spirit dealt with me this morning, he was like, well, stand still. I said, well, okay. All right. You the boss. Come on, somebody. You the boss. So, so I was thinking, you know, holding on and standing still is kind of sort of like the same thing. But when the Holy Ghost got a hold to me this morning, it's really not, you know, the same thing. Come on, somebody. When I looked at the word still, just still, it said the state of being motionless or totally quiet. How many of y'all could be totally quiet? I love to talk. I'm telling you, I... I probably talk in my sleep. Do I talk in my sleep? Yes. I do talk in my sleep? I thought so. Okay. To be totally quiet and, and to, be, to be fully at rest. How many of y'all know what it is to be fully at rest? I mean, no, no trouble in your mind. No, no, no trouble in your heart. No restlessness nowhere. How many of you think you could be? I don't think I can be totally restless until I die. I mean, now, I know some of y'all, you know, I know you've heard preachers say, you know what, you ought to be able to rest in the Lord. Well, I can, you know, I know how to rest in the Lord. But, but I found out that my mind will look for things. I mean, can we be real today? I find out that even when, you know, I want to rest, like fully rest, you know, without sedation. I mean, if y'all know, we, don't, we shouldn't have to have sedation to rest. Can I get some loud amens? Okay, so that, that's what the word still means, okay? So the psalmist, the psalmist says, in the midst of all of this calamity and all of this destruction, God's in, instructions is, look, be still and know that I'm, I am God. Just, just be still. Now, it's easier said than done. Amen. How many of you are kind of sort of aggressive? It's hard for aggressive people to be still. Raise your hand again. That was a lot of y'all. Okay. That was a lot of y'all. Like, you know what, Pastor Green? I'm kind of aggressive. And you know what? This whole generation, you know, every time I talk to people uh, uh, in this generation, let me tell you something. Most of y'all of them claim to be movers and shaking. Come on, somebody. They moving something and they shaking something and they waiting on something. Come on, somebody. They trying to make something happen like the old folks say, some kind of witch away. Yeah, the witch away. Yeah, they got some plans. You know, and you know, it's a beautiful thing for people to have dreams and, and plans and goals and, you know, they're progressive thinkers and they want, they want, they want to use their gifts and, and their talents and, 
You know, people say, I want my greatness. I want, I want my grace, greatness to come out. I say, okay, okay. <laughs> All right. But then it, sometimes you got to learn how to be still. Because you got to be in step with the Lord. You got to move when it's time for you to move. You, you got to work in divine time. Anybody know what I just said? How many of y'all know? You got to, it ain't about this watch. It ain't about the calendar you got on the wall and all that kind of stuff. It's about when God wants you to do what and who, you, who he wants you to do it with. And when he wants you to do it. Come on, somebody. See, that's what stillness is about. You know, you sit back and wait on direction and instruction. Okay? From God. Amen. Not by Googling stuff. Right? Okay. And I know because of social media and, and, and all of the help we can get online, let me tell you something. Try to seek help from God first. Amen? Amen. Can, you, can you please ask God about it first? This is why, this is why when, you, when you start reading Psalms 46, the, the first verse, it says, look at him. In order, in order for you to fully understand what I'm getting ready to say to you, amen, you got to understand that, that God is a present help in the time of trouble. He said, you got to get that down first. When you're in trouble, don't call nobody else. Amen, call on God first. Amen. Somebody say, well, you ain't got to call on God for everything. Bible say what? Acknowledge him and what? All. All your ways. And he will do what? Direct your path. And you, and, and you got to stop leaning on your own understanding. Ooh, y'all can preach. And you got to do what? Trust in him. Yeah. So, so we just can't be saying, put God first. No, you got to actually learn how to put God first. So the psalmist says that this is God's answer for us. Be still, know that I am God. And you say, why, why did it say know that I am God? Because you, you can't say you have faith in God and you depend on God and you trust God, then you try to be God. I thought that was pretty good. Come on, somebody. Huh? You can't say, you know, I have faith in God. I trust God. I'm dependent on God. Come on, somebody. And then you try to be God. How many of y'all have ever tried to be God? Hmm? How many of y'all have found that sometimes we thought, we thought God needed some help? How many of y'all been there? And say, God, I think I can help you. I, 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 th I think I can move this thing along. You know, it's a little bit faster. Come on, somebody. Yeah. And how many of y'all know that, that when, when you have all this faith, you talk about in God, amen, even if it comes to your mind, you dare not. You dare not, amen, try to supplant the authority of God. Amen. This is why the Bible says you got to learn how to cast your cares upon him. Why? How many of y'all know what it means to cast something? Let me see what I got down here. How many of y'all know what it is to cast something? I wish I had something I could just throw. Let me throw my handkerchief. Okay. 
You know, when you cast someone, the Bible says, cast your cares. That means take something and throw it. Watch this. Let me get out here where y'all can see. Some of y'all, you don't know how to cast. Okay? Know what, know what a lot of us do? We drop it. And see, when you just drop it, guess what? It's easy. Okay? But when you cast something, when you cast it, you... Don't go get it. That's the problem. When, when you cast it, then you should be able to just, just walk away from it. Just walk away from it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. I remember my mama used to tell me, whenever I got caught doing the same thing two or three times, <laughs> my mama used to say, you know what? You know what? I'm not going to worry about you no more. How many of y'all know it's scary when your mama say, you know what? How many of y'all ever had your mama do that to you? Say, you know what? I ain't going to worry about you. I ain't going to. I ain't going to, mm-mm, go on, go on here, huh? When you learn how to stand still, that means you put stuff totally in God's hand. You say, God, you can have it. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go on to other things in my life. That thing right there, that's yours, God. Amen. There was a preacher called me this week, and you know, you know, preachers going through something nowadays. Amen. Because y'all doing all kinds of stuff. <laughs> Somebody say, not us. Trust me, it's here too. He was like, he was like, he was like, Doc, you having any problems over the over there at New Vision for Christ? I say, look, every time I since I stopped start doing ministry. I've been having problems ever since they gave my, my ministerial license. I don't know what these other preachers like. Problems just now start happening. I, let me tell you something. As soon as they gave me that ministerial license in 1985, when they gave me that ministerial license, I've been having problems, and the devil have been amping it up. Ever s- anybody know what I'm talking about? I don't know why people act like, oh, uh, you know, I'm having so many trials. I'm having so many tests, and, and the devil, and you know, the devil is here, and the devil, I'm saying the devil never left me. Do I have anybody that that's kind of sort of how your life has been with your saved self? Can I get you to tell the people out there, tell them, say, yeah, that's how my life has been. So, so look at here. We should be used to trouble and trials and tests. Amen? And, and when they come, you know, some of us, we just full of drama. I'm going to tell you what the problem is. I'm going to tell you what the problem is. Some of us, we, we are drama kings and drama queens. Somebody say, that's not even in the Bible. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Jesus told the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the chief priests and the scribes, he said, you know what your problem is? He says, you you will swallow a camel 
but you'll choke on a gnat. It's in your, ain't this in your Bible? I wouldn't lie on a Sunday. It's in, it's in your Bible. Jesus said, you know what? Y'all know how to make little things out of big things. Come on, somebody. He said, but you know what? When you, the things you're supposed to be getting straight, he says, he says, stop winking at the things you do and leaving other things undone. How many of y'all know where it is in the Bible? He said, things you should be doing and you prioritizing the things that you shouldn't be doing and the things you should be doing, you ain't paying no attention to that. It's in your Bible. Come on, somebody. Look at here. When you got your priorities straightened out and you know how to really have faith, then you could be still. Thank you, two people. So, I got to move on. What are some of the best methods we can use to help us to be still? Okay. I think um, um, my secretary, one of my administrative assistants is in the audience. Look, this list I'm getting ready to give, I, I want you all to make copies of it. We're going we're gonna to give this list out, okay, for people. Because cause, you all going to have to go back to this list. So you, can, so you can learn how to really be still. And you know what? You can hold on to your stillness. Amen. Yeah. Because how many of y'all know the Bible said that there'll be times in your life where things are going to be shaken. And the Bible said the only thing that's going to be standing is, is, is that which can stand the shaking. How many of y'all know there's a whole lot of shaking going on? Huh? And let me tell you something. I'm not running from it. Amen. And you know what? I have stopped complaining about it. No, ain't no, no more complaining. No more. And you know what? Stop talking about it all the time. People say, oh, you want to wear a mask, you don't want a mask. I say, do whatever you want to do. You want to wear a mask, you don't want to wear a mask. You want to get the shot, don't want to get the shot. Whatever you want to do, man, go ahead and do it. I know what I'm going to do. I know what I'm going to do. Yes. I know whatever I believe that's good for me, that's what I'm going to do. Take that someplace else. Well, somebody want to argue about it and debate about it. Yeah, I'm trying to see if the heat going to come back in the second half. Somebody said, oh, Pastor Green, that's not even spiritual. Let me tell you something. I don't be doing spiritual things all day long. The Bible says, that the spirit of the Lord don't strive with a man always. I know some of y'all, you know, you be all day long, you. You know, you can't do nothing but worship. And you know, you walk around with your Bible, you be in Winn-Dixie. Walking with your Bible. And you, Go ahead and do it. Go ahead and do it. Some people, you know, they be walking around their house just speaking in tongues. Everybody, you know, there are some people who want people to think. And they try to make people think that they're spiritual. All that stuff don't make you spiritual. Y'all ain't with me today. Let me tell you something. The main thing, the two main things that make you spiritual is that you know God 
You know him, and you're obedient to him. You don't need to write no book. My sheep know my voice, and a stranger they won't follow. And then the next thing, obedience is better than sacrifice. Once you get them two things down, Pat, man, you living for God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, we got to learn how to stand still. Tell somebody, say, I got to learn how to be still. I have to learn how to be still. Okay, to learn to be still, you got to learn how to be silent. How many of you know how to hush? Y'all better go with me. Raise your hand up high. How many of y'all know when to hush? You know when to be silent? Now, nah, let, me, let me explain something to you. The scope of this silence. This silence, watch what I'm going to tell you. This silence is not about just being silent verbal, verbally. Right? It's not just about not talking. It's about learning how to control your thoughts too. Because your mind talk more than your mouth. How many of y'all mind talk more than your mouth? I know my mind do. My mind talk more than my mouth. So when it comes to, when it say you have to learn to be silent in order to be still, see, it's kind of easy for some of us to control this, but you know what? It's a challenge for us to control this. Huh? Ooh, that was good. Huh? How many of you know how to keep your mind under control when your mind try to get out? I can't get nobody to go with me. Oh, jeez. How many of y'all have learned how to discipline your mind? Raise your hand. Well, I'm glad there's a lot of truthful people that say, Pastor Green, my mind be going all anywhere it want to go anytime. Some of y'all say, I'm just, it's an APB out on my mind right now. <laughs> I'm waiting on my mind to fully come back as, as I'm sitting here. But how many of y'all know, amen, the Lord can help you with your mind. I don't have time for that. I just ministered uh, on that in Bible study, right? And, and about your mind. And, amen. You're keeping your mind healed. Amen. So you have to learn to be silent and you have to learn how to reframe yourselves. Okay. How many of y'all know in order to be silent, you, 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 in order to be still, you got to have self-control. Amen. How many of you have self-control to a certain degree? Okay. All right. The next thing, you have to learn how to stop. You have to learn how to completely stop doing something. How many of y'all have ever had to completely stop doing something? Completely just stop. How many of you, you, com you talked in the beginning that your intention was to completely stop doing something and then you started back up again? I mean, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. When you stand and still, you got to learn how to completely stop. And say, you know what, I'm good. I'm good. I'm okay. Yeah, I'm all right. You know, when I, when, I, when I first got saved, when I first got saved, there's some things that I, I still had some cravings for. And, and, and I had, the, it was still a temptation for me. Yes, yes. Amen. Because, you know, spiritually I didn't want it, but my physical body was saying, please go get some more of that. Yes, yes. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yes, yes, yes. Huh? And so, ooh, I had to learn to, I had to learn to, Stop and be serious with myself. That if, if you keep going back, 
Amen. The Bible say, if you resist the devil, what will happen? He'll flee from you. How many of y'all know the sentence before that? He said, first of all, see, a lot of us be talking about we're going to quit doing something. But the Bible say, only when you submit yourself to God, then you can resist the devil, and then the devil will flee from you. So in order to really stop doing something, you got to be totally submitted unto God. Then you'll stop doing what the devil telling you to do. Oh, we have a little bit of Sunday school here today. Come on, somebody. And that helps us to stand still. Amen. And when the devil come with it, say, here, here it is. Here's some more. I'll give it to you for free. You better say, no, I'm good. Mm-hmm. I can stand still and look at it. Huh? Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I had a young lady. I was somewhere. I was somewhere. Somebody say, where? I can't tell you where. I was somewhere. <laughs> and a young lady... I saw her, I saw her in the room that I was in. I was like, mm. I said, well, okay. I got to duck her up. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Now, this happened, like, before I was married and everything. But I saw, I was like, oh, oh man. Okay. She ain't going to see me. Just... Then she saw me. She made eye contact with me. She said, And she motioned to me. She was like, tell me, come outside. I was like, hey, I'm married now. You know what I'm saying? I don't even want people to know I was with you. That's why I didn't last that long. Come on, somebody. How many of y'all ever been with people that you already knew were going to be short term? They ain't know it. Come on, let's, let's, can we be real? Let me ask you again. Don't play with me today. How many of y'all, how many of y'all ever got with people and you already knew in your mind, you like, I already know this is going to be short term. Can I get you? Can I get you? You already knew. You're like, I know this ain't going to last long. But it's all I got right now. So, hey, how many of y'all know when people just substitutions, but they're not a part of your constitution? <laughs> so I went outside. When I said, she was like, how you going to act like that? I said, act like what? Let me tell you something. Men are the best at playing dumb. Can I get the men to say amen? amen. The men know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Women be done caught you. They be done caught you. And then they say, what are you doing? And we're like, what? What? See, with a man, you got to show us real evidence. You can't be saying they said this, they said you be like, child, that third party information. She said, why would you act like you don't know me? I said, what? I was acting like I don't. She said, you know what, you ain't right. I said, look, I said, look, now look, that was then. That was then. That was some time ago. 
I meant to call you. Come on, somebody. How many of you know? See, when you stop, you got to really stop. Turn somebody and say, when you stop, you got to really stop. So I had to tell her, hey, but, but, but look, ain't no problem. You know, hey, hey, whatever. If you want to tell somebody, me and you got together one time, you know, about 10, 12 years ago, hey, you go ahead and tell them. You can go ahead and tell them if you want to. What I do, just make sure we ain't going to never hook up again. I'm scaring y'all half to death today. Somebody said, Pastor Ben, why'd you tell that story? Because even with your attractions, you got to learn how to tell yourself, A, hey, no. No. Do you hear me today? Because some of y'all, you got to learn how to be still even when you're attracted to things and attracted to people. How many of y'all have, have had attractions and you know you ain't had no business following up? Y'all ain't going to go with me, but that's all right. That's all right, okay. I'm almost finished. When you learn how to be still, guess what? You got to learn to watch, but then don't work. You, you, did you understand what I just said? To learn how to be still, you just got to learn how to watch, but don't try to assist God. Don't try to help. Your position is just to watch, Okay? Don't try to do no work. Don't try to assist him. Okay? Learn to wait and be patient if you want to stand still. Okay? Another one. Remember how big God is. When you remember how big God is, it's easy to trust him. Amen? When you could just remember that, you know, he's omniscient and he's omnipresent and He's the king of kings, and he's the lord of lords, and he's the great I am, and he's the lily of the valley, and the bright and morning star, and all that stuff we say he is. He's Jehovah Nisi, and Jehovah Jireh, and Jehovah Shalom, and Jehovah Tzid Kanu, and Jehovah Rophi, and Jehovah Shama, and he's Elohim, and El Shaddai, and, and El Elyon, and, oh, and the list could go on and on. If you can remember how big he is, then you should be able to trust him with anything and everything. It should help you to stand still. Another thing, remember all of his promises to you. That's why I tell people, catalog, when people prophesy to you and God gives you a promise, you ought to have it chronicled somewhere. You ought to have it written down somewhere. Come on, somebody. So, so when it get rough and you having your challenges in, in your life and you're going through the valleys of your life, you just look at that and say, God, you said this. I didn't say it. You said you, you were going to do this. You said I would be this. You said I would be that. You said I would get the job. You said I would get my degree in this. You said. Amen. So, so you've got to remember the promises that God has given you. This helps you to stand still. The next thing is, is you got to focus on other things. This helps you to stand still. That focus on something else you need to be doing and giving attention to. Yeah. Amen. And stop thinking about that thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do some other thing. Put some attention towards some other thing that you should have been working on while you was paying attention to that anyway. It helps you. Amen. Amen to, to stand still. Now look, don't worry, I'm moving on. What, what does standing still do? It allows God to be in full control. 
Do you hear me? What does standing still do? It allows God to do what? Be in full control. How many of y'all want God to be in full control? Okay? Full control. That means all, you, all you're thinking about doing is, Lord, I want you to tell me what to do, when to do it, how to do it, who to do it with. Amen? Amen. Amen. And, it, and it forces us to do what? Control our aggression. That's why I ask you, how many of y'all are aggressive? It forces us to control our aggression and say, look, you got to pull yourself back. Amen. Pull yourself back. How many of y'all know how to, how, to, how to pull yourself back? Huh? Look, look. Stillness, stillness is faith fertilizer. <laughs> Did y'all hear me? Standing still, to be still, it fertilizes your faith. When you can stand back, stand back, and let God handle it. How many of y'all know that shows faith? That shows maturity. And when people come, and when people come, you know, when we were, we were on the other side, and, and we had a church split, and we was on the other side on 103rd Street. How many of y'all from the other side when we was on the other side? And let me tell you something. When we was on the other side, we had a little church split, and, and the other people went their way, and we went our way, and the people was like, well, well look at here. What are you going to do? What are you going to do now that the church is split up? And I was telling people, I don't know actually what God is going to do. I never answered them and says. I don't know what I'm going to do. I answer them and says, I don't know what God is going to do. I don't know what God's going to do. He said, man, how, how y'all start the church? And you don't even know what you're going to do next. I said, because it's not up to me what to do next. It's up to God. Not up to me. When I, go, when I go to bed at night, I will sleep good. Because it's not up to me to try to figure out. And see, this is what the problem with a lot of saved people is. Y'all be trying to figure stuff out. No. No, 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 no. And I used to tell people, I had some of my preacher friends. So you know what? You know, Doc, um, you should do this and you should do that. I say, no, I'm not going to do anything. They say, look at here. They say, what's going to happen to you? The people are going to lose confidence in you. Because the people are going to start asking you, what do you plan on doing? And then they start saying, the Bible says that you got to write the vision and make it plain. I say, look at here. If I don't get the vision from God, it don't mean jack. No, y'all don't hear me today. Huh? Y'all don't hear me today. And because I put the responsibility, when you stand still, you put the responsibility on God. And say, God, you're the one that's God. Amen. So, you, I need a miracle. You the miracle. I'm not a miracle worker. You the miracle worker. Amen. You work the miracle. You do it, God. Once I learn how to stand still and let God be God, let me tell you something. I was like, this is going to work out. This is going to work out for my good. Because it's not my responsibility to be worried and stressed, amen, and can't sleep at night, and, and for my heart to be troubled, and for my heart to be full of fear, you did not give me the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Let me tell you something. 
if the script, the only way you can make the scriptures alive is that you got to start to live the scripture. Jesus said the words that I speak, they are spiritual, but they are alive. They are alive because I attach my faith to them. Some of y'all got mouth faith, you got mind faith, and you got church faith, but you don't have faith to use in your life. Oh! Hallelujah. So look, my commentary is this. Stillness is the medicine that assists us in dealing with chaos, confusion, disaster, disappointment, stress, etc., etc. When you can stand still, watch this now. When you can stand still, peace automatically comes. When you can stand still, what else come? What else will just automatically come? Joy. If, when, when you can stand still, yeah, say, hey, peace going to come automatically. Amen? Because you can sit back and say, you know what? God got this. Yeah. It, it's going to be all right. And see, a lot of us be saying, it is well. And then we, we, we not at rest. We not at peace. We are troubled. And see, we say that's using faith. Using faith is when you make the word of God work. That's what using faith is. It's not faking faith. It's making faith real. That you can stand on it. Come on, somebody. Amen. This is why God says, look, I want you to learn how to stand still. I'm going to close with this. In Exodus, the 14th chapter, and the 13th verse, there was a situation. We all know the situation. The situation that was that God had freed the children of Israel, right? Freed them from who? The Egyptians. They were on their way out. Free people. Free people. The Bible said that God led them into a place on purpose. He led them into a place, can I get somebody to say, on purpose. How many of y'all know in your life you have some ordained trials, some ordained tests, some ordained valley places that you can't get away from? I don't care how many days you fast, I don't care if you have, you call the prophet, 1-800, call the prophet. I don't care if you call some of these pastors, preachers, evangelists, apostles, prophets, bishops, bishops, sisships. I don't care who you call. You're going to have to go through that thing because it's ordained for your life. The Bible says that, that God led them into a place where it was, it was the wilderness on, on both sides, and the Red Sea was in the front. God says, when I lead them into that place, their enemy, which is the Egyptians, are going to think that they are trapped. Read your Bible real good. God said, your enemy, the enemy, they're going to think they're trapped. So God sends them into the place that seemingly... They were going to be trapped there. So they, they get into that place. And so the Egyptian says, oh, they're in a trapped place. They got the wilderness on both sides. They got the Red Sea in front of them. Now it's time for us to attack. So in the distance, they see the enemy coming. How many of y'all ever seen the enemy coming in the distance? You ever seen the devil coming in the distance? You ever seen the devil in the beginning stages trying to stir up things in your life? Trying to ruin things in your life? Trying to come into your life through the side door? And then you have to say, mm, mm, yeah, I see you. Yeah. And you know what? When they saw the enemy, they believed, watch this, they believed that they were in a trap and that there was no escape. So, 
The Bible said that fear came of, upon them. And they start telling Moses like they used to tell him all the time. Oh, you have led us into a trap. You're supposed to be this great leader. You hear from God all the time. Here you have led us into a trap. Oh, man of God. Oh, great man of God. You say, yeah, look what you've done. Yeah, with all that spirit you have. Hmm? They say, look now. Here comes the Egyptians. They're coming. The Bible said they were driving the chariot so hard until some of the wheels came off the chariot. Let them know, we, oh, we after y'all. We want to get you. We want to kill everyone. The Bible said they panicked. How many of y'all know sound just like us? We ain't gonna, we're not going to admit it today. It sounds just like us. Amen. We see the devil rising up. We say, oh, that, 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 there's the devil. So what? Huh? So, so, so watch this. When they see, they panic, and the Bible says they got in an uproar. You're talking about a whole nation of people. You're talking about a whole nation of people. Now they're in an uproar. Now all of them are afraid. Now all of them are terrorized. Now all of them, they are full of stress, and they are full of agony. And all this negativity is going on. Moses goes to God. Moses says, God, what do I do? Moses, God tells Moses, he said, command them to stand still. How many of y'all know if you're going to stand still, you got to be standing on something? Do y'all hear me today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to be telling somebody, say, you got to be standing on something. Huh? God say, tell them, say, stand still. Now, look, he just didn't tell them to stand still. He said, tell them to stand still and do what? And do what? And do what? Stand still. Hold your peace. In other words, get a hold to yourself. Get yourself in order. Get your faith packed. Hold your peace. Shut up with all that doubt and fear and unbelief. Huh? What else he told him to do? He says, stand still. And he says, hold your peace and stop being afraid. He says, look, you're going to see the salvation of the Lord today. He said, what? This enemy you see today, you will see them no more. Tell somebody, say, that's something to stand on. That's something to stand on right there. That's something to stand on right there. He says, look at here. You need to change the way you're acting. You need to change your disposition. You need to change your mindset. You need to change your emotional state. How many of y'all know sometimes you got to learn how to change yourself right on the spot? How many of y'all have ever been in situations in your life where you had to get a hold to yourself in a hurry. And you had to remind yourself and say, God, you already told me. How many of y'all have ever had to quicken yourself? Come on. Come on, brother, help me out. Huh? How many of y'all have ever had to, had, to, had to have that happen to you? And say, look here. And you had to get, God said, get a hold to yourself. How many of y'all have ever had the Holy Spirit had to rise up? Isn't that a beautiful thing? When the Holy Spirit rises up in you and then your faith comes back and your whole being begins to be filled with the glory, <laughs> with the glory of God. And you know what? All the fear 
vanishes away. Amen. And, 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 and the legs that were weak and the knees that were feeble and the body that was shaken, all of a sudden, the peace which passes, all understanding, you can feel it, it come and rest on you. And then you, you're able to stand. And above all, stand. And look whatever it is in the face. Say, if God be for me, then who could be against me? Psalms 46 say, there's going to be chaos, there's going to be destruction. But don't let that stop you from standing still. One thing I didn't tell you, that standing still means, it means to stay in position and stay in place. How many of y'all know in order to get what God's got for you, you can't move out of a certain place sometime. Come on, somebody. Because the blessing and the miracle, unless you're in a certain place at a certain time, you're going to miss it. You know how many people gave me advice? Oh, you ought to leave. You ought to walk away. And the Holy Spirit says, stay. Stay right there. And you know what happens to people when it gets hard and when it gets rough and when the pain gets worse and when the suffering gets worse, then we want to flee. No. No. I'm going to stay here. So when the blessing get here, and the miracle get here, and the healing get here, and, and the job get here, and the money get here, and the promotion get here, I'm going to be in place. I'm standing here until it comes. I'll take whatever, whatever it costs me, because I know in the end, what God's going to give me. Wherever I go thinking it's someplace else with something else and somebody else, it'll never be as big as what God had for me. Can I get somebody to say, I can't afford to miss it. Tell them, say, I can't afford to miss it. Say, I got to stand still. I got to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Hallelujah. I got to be here when I see the hand of God move. I got to be here and I want to be here too. I want to be here for the doubters. for folk who've been talking behind my back who've been running me down and slandering I want to be here for the people that call me a fool for the people that said I was crazy for the people that didn't give me a chance I want to be here so that God gets the glory and God gets the honor and God gets the praise Can I get somebody to say, stand still. Stand still. Stand still. You may be seated.
You know what I'm glad for? I'm glad for the times that I didn't stand still. And I didn't hold on to my faith. And I listened to folk who I thought were spiritual. And I'm grateful that God said, you weren't able to stand but I'm going to give you another chance. I'm going to give you another chance. And I'm glad that he'll take you back and he'll take you in. And when other people want to crucify you and they want to condemn you, God will say, come on back here because I know you learned something. I, I know you won't do it again. Come on, somebody. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow! Job, the book of Job. I want one of y'all to read it for me. Then we get we getting up out of here for real this time. Job, Job 37. I want y'all to read this. Job 37. Where is it? Job 37. Job 37. Come on. Five more minutes. Job 37, verse 14. Somebody stand up and read it for me when you get done. Job, the book of Job, J-O-B. Job, Job 37, verse 14. What does it say? Read it real loud. What does it say? Read it, read it real loud. Hearken, what, does it, what does it say? Hearken unto this. Oh. What? Hearken unto this. Now, God tells Job. <laughs> he said, Job. I need you to listen to this. Now look, Job had lost a lot of stuff. Thousands of she-asses and camels and oxen. Even his wife was going to leave him. Hmm? And he lost 10 children, right? Yes. So God tells him, God tells him, says, I want you to listen to me. God begins to tell him, says, I want you to listen to me, Job. What he tells him? Stand still and consider. Ah. He said, Job, out of all these things that you have lost, now you've had to suffer with balls from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Now you're sick. He said, you know what I want you to do in the midst of it all? I want you to still trust me Amen. and still believe me and, 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 and still know that I'm your God. How many of y'all know he had to be hurting real bad? To be broke and to be sick. And then his wife turns against him and God say, stay right there. Stay right there. Don't, don't run away from it because it's painful. God said, you stay right there. Can I get somebody to say, I'm going to stay right? I'm going to stay right here. Yeah, I'm going to stay right here. Yeah, I'm going to stay right here. What did he tell him? Consider what? 
Consider the wondrous works of God. <laughs> God says, Consider my wonderful works. <laughs> God was telling Job, said, You know what? Don't look at what you're going through. Look at all the wonderful things that I, I, all them camels, I gave that stuff to you. All them she asses, I gave that stuff to you. Even the devil knew I gave it to you. He said, you blessed him so good, and then you put a hedge around him that nobody and nothing can get to him. Say, I will worship you too. That's what the devil told him. Huh? God told him, say, you know what? All that stuff you had before, and even them ten, ten children, I'm the one that gave you all that. All the wondrous things you had in your life before all of this happened. Remember, I want you to stand on, listen to what he tell him. I want you to stand on what I did for you before. Don't, don't, don't think about where you are now. Although I'm doing what you're going through now. I'm in charge of this. And I'm causing this to happen now. But I know how human beings are. You need to remember something that's going to help you get through your pain. Come on, somebody. He said, so remember all the wondrous works that I've done. He said, Joe, take your mind back. Take your mind back and remember all the things you had and all the things I gave you. Because if I gave them to you, what? God said, if I did the wondrous works before, God said, guess what? I can turn around. Now, this is the 37th chapter. He said, I can turn around and I can do it again. He said, you're going to have to get your mind changed the way you think. No change. Don't think about where you are and what you've lost. Think about the same God that gave you all that stuff before. He'll do it again. He'll give you back some she-asses and some camels and some oxen and some more Huh? <laughs> Read on. Anything else? Read that next verse. Let's see what that say. Dost thou know when God disposed them uh -huh. and, and caused the light of his cloud to shine? Uh-huh. God says, I can turn things around just like that. He said, I can take dark clouds away. And in an instant, the sun will come out again. But I need you to stay where you, where you are. Stand. He said, if you stand still, I'm going to come. And I'm going to, I'm going to reveal. I'm going to restore. I'm going to revive. And I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to do. I need, you, I need to see you stand still first. Because yes, yes. when you stand still, I can't respond to nothing but faith. Come on, Pastor. Come on. And if you could just, if I could just see you stand still, then I'm going to show you that I'll give you what I want for you after this is over. And when you get to the 42nd chapter, Job begins to talk and he says, God, I understand you better than I've ever understood you in my life. Job said, Lord, you know what? All those things that you took from me, all those things that you took from me, I've learned something. 
while I was going through. And God says, good then. Now that you have stood still, I'm getting ready to give you a double portion. Tell somebody, say, there's benefits in standing still. God's going to work it out. Right where y'all. How many of y'all know we're not running? <laughs> we, we are not giving up. We are not giving out. We are not giving in. In Jesus' name. Be still. Know that he is God. Yeah. <laughs> How many of you know if we stand still, he'll open up the Red Sea. How many of you have claimed today that things are getting ready to open up for you? Yeah. Things are getting ready to happen that look like it was held up. It's getting ready. Tell somebody I said it's getting ready to open up. Get ready. Getting ready to open up. Getting ready to open up. Yeah, 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 yeah. God is doing powerful things in this day and in this time. There are people watching this telecast today, this telecast, this broadcast, that you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. The Bible said that now is the acceptable time. The day is the day of salvation. You have an opportunity today while the blood is still running warm in your veins and while the breath is still in your body to receive Jesus Christ. All you got to do is believe that he lived. You got to believe that they put him on a cross, believe that they crucified him on that cross, and believe that the blood that he shed it was for the remission of the sins of all mankind, that whosoever shall believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life, and that they put him in a tomb. But on the third day, he rose from the grave with all power in his hands, and when he got up, we got up with him. The Bible says if you confess this with your mouth and you believe this in your heart, then you shall be saved. If this is your confession today, then you are saved by the Lord. Amen. By the blood of Jesus Christ. Our prayer is that the Holy Spirit will come upon you and begin to minister unto you. No one can take your salvation away from you. There is a place on our website. When you go to the website, you'll see the word salvation. If this is your confession today, press on that word salvation. When the page opens up, follow the directions and instructions that is on that page. And we will put it in our files today that you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Let us give those who are born again who just received Christ a hand clap today. Lord, we thank you for grace and mercy right now. We also would like to thank everyone. We also would like to thank everyone who sow into the kingdom of God through this ministry. It is by and with your support that you allow us to continue to go forward to do that which God has called, planned, purpose, and ordained for us to do. We pray that God will bless you 100-fold for your faithfulness to the kingdom of God. And thank you for partnering with us. We also thank you for praying with us. The Bible says we should pray you one for another. We pray for you also. And we pray that God will minister unto you as he sees fit in Jesus' name. The church has opened up. We have services here in the main sanctuary here in North Miami. We urge you to come and fellowship with us. We have changed the policies and the procedures in reference to coming out 
and fellowshipping in our live services. You need to go on the website and read the changes. You do not have to have to register anymore so you can be invited to church, but there are still some guidelines in place, some CDC uh, mandates that we kept in place. You still um, have to wear masks during the duration of the services, amen. And when you come to church, amen, make sure you follow the guide, guidelines that are still in place. And another uh, uh, policy that we left and procedure we left in place, if you're having symptoms of any type, you know, if, if you've been coughing, you've been sneezing, if you're running a fever, come on somebody. If you've been around people who have the virus, you know, then don't come to church. Come on, somebody. Yeah, it's the same thing you have to do when you go every place else. When you go in the doctor's office, you know, they tell you, hey, look at here. You know, fill out these things. If you check a, 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 a yes for any one of them, they say, well, you will have to reschedule. Come on, somebody. So let us use, let us use our common sense, you know when it comes to coming back and, and, and fellowshipping in the main sanctuary. So go on the website and find out the new policies and the new procedures. It is much easier now. And, and we welcome you in to come and fellowship with us. How many of you are glad that the changes have been made and, and the doors to the church are open? The doors to the church are open, okay? So put the word out. We're still following social distancing to a certain degree, okay? So, so come out and be a part of the live service. Amen? Amen? Amen. Okay. Now look at here. Continue your intercessory prayer. Amen? Continue your intercessory prayer. Pray for the least, the lost, the left out, the downtrodden. There's a whole lot of suffering going on in the world. There's a whole lot of pain that people are suffering. The Bible says, you know, in the book of St. Matthew, Jesus said that there'll be what? Wars and rumors of wars. We got wars going on. Come on, somebody. We need to be in prayer. We need to be in prayer. We, the Bible says, we are the light of the world. We are the city that's, that, that's set on a hill that cannot be hid. We are the fire that nobody can put up under a bush. Somebody said, what does all that mean? God said, I'm getting ready to expose my people. I'm getting ready to use my people. Because the earth is moaning and groaning and waiting on the manifestation of the sons of God. So God desires to use us, okay? So let us continue to pray and, and be intercessors. How many of you feel good in your sanctified soul today. <laughs> Tell somebody, say, I'm going to be here when my blessing comes. We have to say goodbye to our online audience at this time. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to continue to shine upon you and give you peace is our prayer. Remember, we're not just a church here at New Vision for Christ Ministries. We are a movement. God loves you. Bless you. We'll see you Wednesday night. <laughs>